People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Melissa, my CIMT plaque is heterogeneous and echogenic. What does that mean? My numbers are not good. CCA, common carotid artery, 1.17, CCA 1.32, plaque burden. So let me tell you something, Melissa. Again, I'd have to see your specific numbers. I can say a few things. The numbers that you're quoting look like they came from cardio risk. Cardio risk has about the best quality control for CIMT activities. So that's a major advantage. On the other hand, they have these numbers. And these numbers are like the first and second components of the cardio risk. If I've had one person come to me getting ready to jump off a cliff thinking I'm about to die, I've had hundreds. The problem with CIMT is, number one, it's not on the standards committees. We understand completely why. It, there's a arterial age variation there that's more garbage in, garbage out. When you have good groups doing it, you get a much better component there or a much better, more reliable read. But at the end of the day, arterial age is nothing but getting people's attention. The numbers that you've got there are also nothing but getting people's attention. What you really want and what is significant is, number one, do you have plaque? In other words, components of plaque that are 1.3 millimeters or greater. Once you know you have plaque, then you need to consider being on a low-dose statin and a baby aspirin. Then there's the second thing. If you have plaque, is it soft or echogenic, or is it something in between? And something in between is heterogeneous. All of this is based on the, the amount of calcification that you see in the plaque. So that gets back up to JMK's question about calcification and whether it's good or bad and all the confusion associated with that. Now, heterogeneous. Many of us, Melissa, never get beyond heterogeneous into echogenic. Heterogeneous is stable. Soft plaque is not stable. Heterogeneous is stable and echogenic is stable. So I get the question a lot too. Well, if soft it is unstable and echogenic is stable, what is heterogeneous? Is it sort of halfway in between? It's in between, but it's not halfway at all. It is like 90% there in terms of stability. And again, some of us never get beyond that piece. But don't worry about it if you're one of those because heterogeneous is stable. JMK, regarding your secondary prevention patients, do you ever check the blood test called MMP9, matrix metalloproteinase 9, to help predict coronary plaque rupture? I investigated that a couple of years ago. It didn't appear to be worth it at that time, and I haven't seen a lot of progression of it. You know, they've done several things looking for the, quote, the vulnerable plaque. Well, there are a couple of problems with looking for the, quote, the vulnerable plaque. If one plaque is vulnerable, you've got bunches and bunches of them. It's a metabolic issue. Plaque vulnerability is a metabolic issue, not a localized issue. And, you know, we talked about it. Some of the best indicators for metabolic issues are getting the metabolic labs, looking at your glucose tolerance test, your insulin survey, looking at your current metabolic health. Again, I go back to the same thing that you saw in those studies today. Abdominal circumference, abdominal obesity, your triglycerides. Triglycerides over HDL is a very important ratio set of numbers. As we've also been talking about in this show today, looking for soft plaque on a CIMT. So those are the ways to tell whether or not you have soft plaque. They're much, much more reliable than a metalloproteinase.